see she don't fuck with you cause she don't fuck with bitch niggas and you know it ain't a hidden love Scanny ass bitch there yeah. It's your boy, I'll be scared. It's your boy. Yo, motherfucker, too late of this bitch, man. Yo, yo. And today, we are here to check out the top 10 things that it did differently than the original it. So, yeah, let's get into it. I don't know about y'all, but when I watched this shit, nigga, that shit had me fucked up. Like, it, from the <laughs> beginning to the end. Yeah. They all had me just. There like, was so much shit. Like it just had me think about shit. Like, dude, when I when I pass them little drainage points, I get real. Little weird. Like, ugh. I'm not parking near them bitches. The drains, the sink drains, like yeah, sink some drains, shit might grab I you. I might just clog that bitch up. <laughs> but yeah, it, this is a great movie. I'm gonna be real. I didn't watch the original. I do want to watch it though. But we we finna check out what it did differently. Yeah. They all float down here, and when you're down here with us. You'll float too. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things that IT 2017 did differently. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Yes, guys. For this list, we're reactions. looking at the differences hey, not just it. between the 2017 film adaptation of the Stephen King story and the 1990 miniseries, but also the changes from the book. Many plot points regarding the movie, miniseries, Pauses. and book. Have you heard about the book? The book? No, I ain't. I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't There's read a sex scene. There's a sex scene. And it's like starting what a is? big controversy. Oh, yeah, it's starting a big old, like, problem. Who was he fucking? I feel like it's that girl. The one that went into the sink? Beverly. Hey. Oh, and he fucked her, so, basically? Not in the book. I, I don't know who fucked her. I don't, I don't know, but that's apparently what's going on. See, I might have to look more into that. If y'all know about that some more, let us know. Yeah. Are ahead. So, a major spoiler <laughs> alert is now in effect. Number 10, the era in which the story takes place. If I were you guys, I wouldn't pay to see a monster movie. I'd stay home and look in the mirror. In the book, the losers first encounter the intergalactic terror known informally as Pennywise the Clown in the summer of 1958. And... 27 years later, they returned to finish it off. That, that's dope that the the legend about him was that he comes out every 27 years or something. Hell and yeah. then he really came back 27 years later. Yeah, and what like kind of like surprised me is I didn't, all that shit didn't click into my head to like the end. Like, yeah. I like, even when uh old uh, chubby motherfucker was um reading the books and yeah. you know, going through the pictures and all that shit that was it was clicking in my head, but then at the same time it kind of wasn't. Yeah. I was just trying to enjoy the movie. A, a question that really threw me off, like, like the movie was full of jump scares, like scary shit, but I just didn't understand why it was all happening until it was the people were saying like the twenty seven years thing, and then yeah. he said at the at the end, that's dope how they did that. Definitely yeah, smart. Yeah, smart. The miniseries was close, but shows 1960 for the original encounter, and 30, not 27 years later, for the second fight. The 2017 adaptation moved the story to the late 80s, updating the time period for a more modern audience, and hitting all those nostalgic notes. It's almost as though Stand By Me was a trial oh, run for it. See, like, Stephen King, for him to do it again, that shit was also iconic because nigga Stephen King got hella clapped when it yeah. comes to scary movies. Like, definitely. Yo, I swear. Like, even my mom, she, oh, Stephen King's my favorite. Stephen King, yeah. Stephen King, Stephen King, Stephen yeah. King. That's real though, cause just for him to really, I'm gonna do this 27 years later, like it says in my and movie like book, yeah, like, for the fact that he like, for fact of one, he lived that long. Like, it's yeah. no disrespect, but like a lot of people don't. Yeah, a lot of people who tells crazy stories like that crazy shit end up happening to them mm -hmm. and so that he's still back in his shit doing what he did still That's pushing it. out damn number one movies number like, one like already yeah already definitely while that would place the second fight in the upcoming part two in 2016 many moviegoers noted that the film's 2017 release date saw it returning to screens 27 years after the first adaptation number nine patrick hockstetter 
Patrick Hochstetter, one of the more sinister members of Henry Bauer's gang, is a character from the original book that was left out of the 1990 adaptation. His death comes before any of the other bullies meet their fates. While his demise in the See, 2017 film is chilling, from the oh, novel, Patrick... We ain't never really watched the old it, so... Mm. It, like, this is all kind of, like, new for us. Yeah, definitely. So, if we kind of look crazy, you know, judge us. We, we sitting here just watching, trying yeah. to learn some information, too, shit. Patrick's death is downright gruesome. After making sexual advances on Henry in a junkyard, Bowers threatens to tell the police about Patrick's junkyard fridge, where the troubled youth keeps dead animals. After Wait, Bowers so leaves... Who? For making sexual advances on Henry in a junkyard, Bowers threatens to tell the police. Henry. Henry is the guy that they were just talking about. Was they saying? No, nah, that's Patrick. That pa Patrick is who they're just talking about. So who made the move on who though? That's what I'm saying. I've never read the book. Oh uh, yeah, me either. Y'all let us know. Somebody give me a page about book. <laughs> For real. Fridge. Where Where's the trouble the paragraph? dead animals? So. After Bowers leaves. Patrick goes to dispose of the carcasses, but upon opening the fridge, is attacked by it, manifested as blood-sucking and flying leeches. It sucks him dry and drags his body to the sewers. Oh, oh shit. Number eight, the blood oath. I swear to me that if it isn't dead, we'll come back. In the book, having successfully vanquished it, more so they hope, the losers make a solemn promise to return to Derry should Pennywise ever rise again. While the spirit of this was maintained in the 1990 adaptation, the severity of the promise was minimized, as the kids simply touch hands and link arms. As the AIDS crisis was still in full swing in 1990, the producers probably didn't want to show kids mixing blood so casually. In 2017, True. though, just like in the they book, show that they did a blood pact to illustrate the seriousness of their promise, slitting their hands with a broken bottle as they swear to one another to come back if the job ever needs finishing. Number seven. Well, I'm going to say it if, if I end up forgetting to say it. I definitely recommend everyone to go check it out in the theaters. I'm a person that don't even like going to the movies, but I would actually, I fucked with that. Yeah. You need the surround sound, you need the up close, you need the all feeling. that. Yeah, that the shit, feeling. Like, dude, that shit was... Hey, uh, that was a dope ass I swear, movie. man, this nigga was just sitting there like... All into it, like... Oh yeah, what the shit. Fuck? Yeah, like, like dude, this shit was just wild. Great movie, great movie. Parents. My dad was stationed in Derry during World War II. And he started collecting these old photos that go way back to the olden days. Most of the parents so basically, and adults in general uh, are basically absent. instead of the chubby dude being the one who tells the history, the black dude, the, the black yeah, I guy, think so. Black kid. Okay. Think so play a different role. It's in the 2017 shit. adaptation, because Pennywise's influence over the town compels the grown-up townsfolk to look the other way. But no parents are quite so absent as Mike Hanlon's. They're deceased, which is quite a change. Actually, he might be that one kid, because remember they all ganged up on him in the movie, the one black kid, mm -hmm. and went after. I don't know. Maybe he playing like both of them parts in the same. Mm -hmm. The novel and the 1990 miniseries. Mm -hmm. And my daddy grieved for a long, long time. In the book, Mike and his parents are constantly the target of racist comments and aggression, and his father and Henry Bauer's father have a long, dark history. However, in the 2017 adaptation, both Mike's mother and father are dead, and he's being raised by his grandpa. I think mm. this friendship with the Losers Club really means a lot to him. Number six, Henry Bauer's. Your dad's that boy. In the 2017 film, so, Blade Blade, Henry yeah, is not is. just a little punk, but a child of abuse, learning torment and prejudice at his father's knee. His shattered mental state even leads him to kill his own father before pursuing the losers. That's However, not, yeah. his 2017 Remember screen exit him. is where things... Ooh. That dude is him. Remember the nigga that was trying to shoot cats and shit? Oh, oh, they talking about him. He killed his own Henry. father. I do. But remember. if you go back, you know how they was talking about the book? Mm. The sex with Henry. That's Henry. Oh, okay. So they saying someone had sex with him. Yeah, something went on with that. that, that Probably with his father, and that's why he killed him or yeah, something like that. 
mm-hmm. really deviate from the book in the miniseries. Yeah, I fuck with the mullet. To the sewers, the mullet was dancing. by buddies Belch Huggins and Victor Chris. Henry goes after the losers alone, and after a brief fight with Mike, tumbles down the well. If he survived the fall, he probably still has an important part to play in Derry. Uh, that was to I think it just kind of walked in love with while it's an important location in the book, the yeah. New Old Street House never made an appearance in the 1990 miniseries. However, the haunted house was given its proper due by director Andy Muschietti and crew. More than just a creepy building, the New Old House is its above-ground lair, and in some ways is an extension of it itself. Kind of how the town of Derry also is. Under Pennywise's influence, the house can play tricks on the minds of anyone foolish or brave enough to go inside. Since it's the site of their first battle, Kneebolt is where the losers begin to understand the power of their friendship. Number four, Beverly Marsh. Beverly's fears about adulthood are wrapped up in her own sexuality. In the 1990s miniseries, she was just one of the losers, a working class girl with an abusive father. Daddy, please. Oh shit. Oh, I'm already running with some boy. In the 2017 version, it's clear <laughs> that her father is a pervert who worries about her, and at school, she has the unfair reputation as a slut. Womanhood and sex are her greatest fears, and the 2017 film does not shy away from those themes. The book's infamous and polarizing sex scene, where she turns her fear into an act of love for her friends in an attempt to grow up, however, did not make it into the so latest that. adaptation. Number three, Georgie's disappearance versus his death. Hi, Georgie. In both the book and the miniseries, it is very clear that little Georgie Denbro is dead, dead, dead. In the book, he meets Bob Gray, also known as Pennywise, also known as It, in the storm drain while chasing his paper boat. While the iconic setup is the same in all three, what varies is the final execution. Pardon the double entendre. In all three, Georgie's arm is ripped off. In the book and the miniseries, the boy bleeds out, off camera in the miniseries, and is confirmed dead. In the 2017 film, his arm oh, is torn off, but he's then head. dragged into the sewer. This that plants false hope in shit. Big Bill and the audience. Pause that, that dude, maybe. I swear, dude, when that shit first, like, because that's just right when we got Yeah, to, that was like the opening yeah, scene like type shit. Yeah, we walked in, sat down, we run, he running, running, boom, he hit that shit, get back up, running, running, boom, meet dude, and like... All that shit, and I'm just like, oh, time. I wanted to be that nigga. This, no, no, <laughs> don't go. But at the same time, I'm like, fuck that. So Keep I'm just it there, like, I, I was just feeling like it wasn't gonna happen. I thought he was gonna let him run away because I ain't seen the original. I didn't know he got taken at all of man. Him. But I thought he was. He like it was just being uh, like the like, being a clown. Man, niggas told me that the old, <clears throat> niggas told me that oh, it was scary as hell. Like old heads. So if for them niggas to say shit scary. I was like, damn, that shit probably about to be something. So yeah. I was already expecting some <laughs> shit, but I ain't expect no shit like that. Yo, that shit was, yeah. he grabbed, like. And it ain't even the fact that oh, first, he, like, oh. first, first he ripped off his arm, like, and bit it off. That was savage enough. I thought he was going to leave him in the street. He started crawling away with one arm, and then, <laughs> like, yanked and it was that just, nigga back in the drain. It was crazy. And the old crazy. lady came back out as soon as homeboy left. Like, for real. If I was that bitch, I would be like, hey, get the damn train. Yeah, for no, real. She was just yeah. watching them right there to, in the rain. You don't get your ass back in the house. kids can be saved. <laughs> Number two, more cursing and violence. Hey. It's basically, piss and sh- Bro, they had me geeked out. Yo, I'm telling you, these little niggas, they was funny as in. hell. Yo, they was sitting there talking about, oh, your mother. Like, it was, it's the... Like it's like teenage jokes. boy jokes. I'm telling you, they had it down pat. Like, they, the one nigga with the glasses, I'm telling you, he, he had the comebacks for everything. He was the one nigga that really could flame you type shit. Swear. Like, he not having nothing. For real. He, nothing. He not taking shit serious, <laughs> G. So he really when he didn't. Like, dude, he seen the clown. He's scared. He's supposedly scared of clowns. It really didn't look like he was that scared of clowns. I feel like he, he cracked the joke or something. Every single fucking time, yo. <laughs> Swear, that shit, that nigga was just too funny. He was a savage. Shit, so savage. In the opening scene with Georgie and Pennywise, the 2017 adaptation quickly establishes one thing. It earned that R rating. Made for TV, the 1990 version was cleaned up enough to be enjoyed at home by families. And while it is still enjoyable, the miniseries could never quite achieve the terror of the book. The book was really that scary? 
However, Muschietti's R-rated film salted things back up, with oh, lots of F-bombs and crude humor from the kids, and plenty this of rapid violence scary. and yeah. horror. As a result, the 2017 version is more terrifying and a truer adaptation Best. of the book overall. And hey, really? Will Steve is the king of horror for a reason. Number one, yeah, flashbacks versus linear storytelling. Mike? Yeah, buddy. Listen. In both the book and the miniseries, the story is set during the loser's adult phase, with the events of their terrifying childhood told in flashbacks. As a result, the rising action of each timeline, young and grown, is experienced in tandem. In the book, this is even more effective, since as adults, the losers have forgotten everything that happened and must help each other piece things together, adding a dark mystery component. However, in the 2017 film, the timeline is linear featuring only the adolescent losers, with their adult lives to be explored in the sequel. Both forms are effective, although individuals will surely have it. their preferences. Remember when it ended? It Except did, one. but, but I wonder how long is it going to take? I hope not. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips so. from Watch Mojo and Hell, subscribe oh, that to shit, I mean, every day. That would be dope. We damn, we some old heads now, and then this shit come out. We like, yeah, what y'all know about that? Yeah, we seen that shit when we was... Well, shit, we still kind of. I'm trying young. to tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. That's the only right. It is. But I feel like, mate, Steve, if, it, if it's 27 years, Stephen King ain't going to... No disrespect to him, but I doubt he's going to be the one directing that shit. Yeah, you never know. The horror might keep him alive. Real nigga shit. Uh, like we said, it was a great movie. It was. Definitely. I recommend everyone go check it out. Yeah, yeah. Um... That was the te top 10 things that it did differently. Uh, yeah. Make sure y'all like, comment, comment, subscribe, yeah. all that. Till next time, YouTube. We out this bitch. Five minutes, man, I'm in your bitch, and then I'm out, gone. All I need is five minutes in or out her mouth. If she talking crazy, nigga, I just kick her out. This a one where I'm bout, bet I knock her pussy out.